Okay, so in today's work, we are going to focus on statistical inference for a mean difference within paired data. Okay, so we're going to look at this example here that will kind of remind us of where situations might arise that will get this paired data. So let's look at our situation. So we have a pharmaceutical company that's developed a new drug to lower cholesterol. And they want to compare it to the drug that is currently being recommended by most doctors. To do this, the company will recruit 20 male volunteers, all similar in age. Half of the subjects will be assigned the new drug and the other half will be assigned the current drug. So let's outline a completely randomized design for this experiment, right? So our completely randomized design to make our outline, we are going to have, right, 20 males, right? And from the 20 males, we are going to have random assignment. And we're gonna get random assignment into two groups, right? We'll do a random assignment that'll get us into we'll call group one, and we'll do a random assignment that will get us into group two, right? And we'll have 10 within each of these groups, okay? Now, from there, we're gonna have one group get the current drug. The other group will get the new drug. Right? And if we had more than two things we were comparing, we would look at random assignment here as well, right? So you'd say, hey, we're gonna randomize into our groups and we're gonna randomly assign into our treatments, right? And so from the current drug, right? From the current drug, we'll come over here, right? And we can measure the reduction in cholesterol. All right, we'll do that for both of our groups, right? We need a measure after we do our experiment. So we'll measure the reduction in cholesterol. We'll do that for both groups. All right, and after that, Right, so we'll measure the reduction for the two groups, right? And what we'll be able to do is then we're gonna compare the reductions using two sample T procedures, All right? So we might look at that as mu sub n, the new minus mu sub c, the current, All right? A lot of times though, people will say mu one minus mu two, and you make sure that of course you're defining your variables, okay? Now for this completely randomized design, all right? We wanna make sure that we understand that the 20 males will be labeled labels placed in a hat and mixed well. All right, and we can then randomly draw the first 10 labels, one at a time. And assign the males selected 
to treatment group one. All right. So when we talk about this random assignment, and we're completing this experimental design, we do need to provide how is this random assignment going to occur? All right. And so the first time else to group one, others to group two. All right. So we do have to provide that information. And then next we look and we say, well, what if we wanted to outline a matched pairs design? If we wanted to outline a matched pairs design, here's what we would have. All right. For a matched pairs design, we're still going to have our 20 males, right, for this cholesterol study, right? But in our matched pairs design, we're going to have, right, pair one, then we're going to have pair two, right? And it's going to come on down, right, all the way until we get to pair 10, right? That pair one will have two people, pair two will have two people, all the way to pair 10 will have two people. That's going to give me my 20 subjects, my 20 males. Okay. Then I need to randomly assign. And I can do this by flipping the coin. Right. Randomly assign, right, essentially male one to one treatment. Right. Male two to a second treatment. Right. And I'm going to be doing that for each of my pairs, right? And so then from male one, we'll measure the reduction, right? For male two, we'll measure the reduction in cholesterol. I'm right? gonna do that for every one of those, right? And then we will look at from each pair, we will look at from each pair the difference in the reduction, right? So we'll say difference in the reduction one, right? And then for pair two, right? For pair two, we would have difference, right? In reduction two, right? And we go all the way down to our 10th pair where we would measure the difference in reduction by 10. Okay. Now, when we're doing our work like this, right, when we're doing our work like this, what we're going to be working with then is a paired T procedure for mu sub D, right? And mu sub D, we'd want to make sure that we define it and that it's the mean difference, right? Not the difference in the means, but the mean difference for each of the pairs, right? And sometimes this will be written as mu one minus two, but it will be important that we are careful to define our variables, right? Now, how do we decide the pairs, right? We're gonna pair based on a factor that may otherwise be confounding, right? So we're gonna look to try to control for something that may also affect the cholesterol, all right? So we can come over here and we say, okay, well, what's gonna be this benefit of using the matched pairs in an experiment? And here's our big piece, right? Why do we like this matched pairs? We're gonna have more power and that's gonna be because the variation is further reduced, All right? Remember that we learned that matched pairs design helps to reduce variation. 
by reducing variation, then we are increasing the power of our test. And once again, right, that's very important. Right? So how do we form the blocks? How do we do the form the pairs? So once again, we're going to form the pairs based on a similar characteristic that may contribute to the response, right? Or use the same subject if appropriate. All right, so that's the, you know, the idea that sometimes we'll see, hey, how has some treatment changed the characteristic or the, the measurements within individual subjects? All right. But we want to be careful about that. Okay. Now, how do we organize our data to complete paired T procedures for statistical inference? The organization of the data, right, is going to be to have data aligned for each subject right? calculate the difference from each subject, right, or subject pair. And then we'll use one sample T procedures or paired data otherwise known as the paired T procedure on the list of differences, right? Which is why we then talk about, we're looking for the mean difference by calculating the standard deviate, the mean of the difference, the sample mean of the difference, and the sample standard deviation of the difference, right? So this is gonna look very much like the one sample T tests and one sample T intervals that we've done, but we're gonna be doing this with paired data, okay? So this gives us a short right, idea of the experimental techniques that many times lead to our data and then our decision on, well, should I use a two sample procedure or should I use a paired sample procedure? Okay, so make sure you pay attention to the examples and the notes that will follow so that you can be successful in your understanding and your work.